Hi everybody, it's 314 React here. Today we're going to be looking at some more reshade in Unreal Tournament. Just looking through the comments on one of my previous videos, RTX 3090 Doom Eternal Ray Tracing. And I think one of the devs of reshade told me to try out the new image-based lighting feature that's now available. So I had a look in how to enable that. Um, it's just set to one and what you have to do is to go into the reshade file that you're using, the INI file, and add in image based lighting equals one into the preprocessor definitions, and this will unlock an extra slider. If you want to find out how to install reshade ray tracing on Unreal Tournament, there's a link to another video of mine in the description which goes through how to do that. I'll also put the preprocessed definitions that I'm using here into the description as well, so you can go down there and grab that. And once you've seen that video and gone to all the links, you should be ready to go. So I've enabled image-based lighting here. That's ready to go. I was just looking at what image-based lighting is, one of the most basic definitions that I found here is that image-based lighting is a technique for lighting a 3D scene using a special type of image file. This is known as a HDR file. Instead of a conventional 3D lights, the scene is illuminated by the brightness of pixels in an environment map. The image is usually captured from a real world location. Because of this, the 3D rendered objects can be made to look as if they're actually in that environment. Image-based lighting requires that the environment map has a greater range of brightness values than a standard image. A higher dynamic range image can capture all the possible brightness values that the human eye can see. So at least in terms of this definition, it looks like image-based lighting is where you get uh, an environment map from a real world image and then use the lighting from that to implement the lighting in a scene. So the way I imagine it is that unlocking image-based lighting in Reshade for the RTGI shader is gonna allow it to probe around it for distant light sources, possibly. Maybe even the skybox of a game. I'm not sure if that's possible in Reshade. Possibly going to use the normal uh, channel as well for the way the surface normals are facing uh, to light them congruently with how the light is coming in. So it's going to be interesting to see. I think I need to do a bit more reading on this. Uh, I'm sure someone who knows a lot more about this is going to leave some information in the comments. We're going to have to see. Anyway, so I've enabled that in the INI file here. Again, all the links are in the description how to set this up. So let's dive into Unreal Tournament and see how it looks. So here we are in game. Uh, it should be noted that you have to use the latest 0.19 version of the RTGI shader. Again, the instructions for grabbing that are in the link in the description. Uh, it should be the latest one on their Patreon channel. Once you're all signed up, I've also downloaded the very latest version of Reshade. Again, the link is in the description for that. And you can see that we now have an extra slider, image-based lighting intensity. The only other thing I noticed was that the effect itself was no longer working, even though my preprocessor definition still had depth input is reversed to one. I'm not sure what happened there. I found I had to go into the D3D11 tab and tick copy depth buffer before clear operations. I think I'd ticked this before, but I think it may have been unticked when I upgraded the reshade version. So if you upgrade reshade and it suddenly stops working in games, it's best to check to make sure this setting is ticked. Otherwise it won't be able to detect the depth buffer and to make sure that uh, depth input reversed is set to one, at least for Unreal Tournament on D3D11. So let's get the frame rate up and let's dive into a level. Let's try some arcane tempo. I think this will have some good lighting on it to experiment with. Let's go. Okie dokie, so this is just with the usual effect, no image based lighting on the slider yet, so let's find this area here, go to the lighting channel, so you can see the way everything's lit there, still got my same settings from the last video, and let's crank image based lighting up. So as you can see there, cranking up to one seems to add some light down here. And on the gun there, I'm not sure where that light is coming from. It's quite a yellowy light. Uh, if we go back to the standard channel, it looks like it's picking up a kind of sun color from up here, I guess, towards the top of the screen. That would make sense because that's quite bright. So if we go back to the lighting channel, yeah, as, as I move down and that bright bit goes off the screen, you can see that extra shading disappears. So I think... It, at least in this case, it's probing like the brightest color in the scene, the top left there, and applying it to the scene overall. Because you can see definitely as I look up, you can see it go brighter. And as I look down, you can see that color drop off. And it's definitely that color of that ceiling up there. This, this area here. So if we go into the light channel, look up. You can see that brightness fill in. That extra color here, here. And as I look down, it goes off screen and it disappears. So I think what it looks like it's doing with image-based lighting here 
is probing for like the brightest color in the scene and then assuming that that is the most predominant lighting source like the sun and then applying it in some clever way to the objects on scene. That's what I think is happening. That's what looks like is happening here. So it is kind of doing what image based lighting should be doing. Uh, but obviously because this is screen space only, it can only probe what's on the screen, it can only deal with what's on the screen, it can't really deal with environment maps or anything like that. So the sky here through this like hole in the sky, that should also be affecting it, I imagine. Yes, yeah, so let's go back to the lighting channel. So we look down. Yeah, you can see it's actively changing the shading on the gun there. Like changing the color of the shading as well. Whereas we've turned image based lighting to zero. Ah, yeah. That's really cool. So we're going to crank it up. See, see, it's taking that extra glow from the ceiling there. And you look down, it's kind of disappearing. Because as we look up, that ceiling is now the brightest thing. That hole in the ceiling, that skylight. It's now the brightest thing. So the gun is kind of reflecting that color off of it. And so is the rest of the scene. And then as we look down, it goes off the screen. And you can see the gun changes to more yellow. Because now the brightest thing on the scene is this roof uh, ceiling bit here or this bit here. And it's taking the color from that instead. Go back to the lighting channel, look up. And then back down, you can see it goes much more orange. Again, thanks to CJDK for pointing this option out to me because I didn't notice it. It's pretty cool uh, having it enabled. So let's go through here. So the brightest thing on this bit should be that fire. So it should be quite orange. And if we take the fire off screen, yeah, you can kind of see the overall lighting changes. Let's turn image based lighting off. Let's look at this wall here and turn image based lighting back up. So it's got that nice orange glow. Turn back. It turns into more yellowy. Kind of a pinky orange glow there. Let's go to the standard channel. That's interesting. So I imagine the color there probably being a little bit influenced by the HUD because that will be being taken into account. But then when you turn, it's most likely this flame being taken into account with the image based lighting. So that kind of makes sense. You can also see there's like extra kind of bluey color. I'm going to have to find a way to mask the HUD out. I keep saying that, but I will, I will sit down one day and figure out how to mask the HUD. Let's go outside. So out here, the skybox and this sun should be the predominant factor in what's informing the lighting here. So we've got the lighting channel. So we've got that kind of blue look on the scene. If we turn it down. Much more subtle out here. You just see there's a bit of extra lighting there and there on the gun. Let's look down. Okay, there's a considerable amount of blue extra lighting on the gun there. And on the rock here and the tree there. I think that's where the brightest part of the scene is most likely this area here. And it's probing that to inform the lighting on the scene. So if we go back to the lighting channel and look down. Yeah, that blue color kind of disappears off. Yep, definitely. Because as that bright bit where the waterfall hits the water disappears off screen, that blue color disappears off the rock and off of the rocket launcher. So with image base intensity at 1, it's really heavily picking up on anything that's on screen. So it's probably something that needs a bit of tweaking. But yeah, you can even see in the standard channel there, you can see the uh, additional blue glow on the gun and on the stone there. And as it goes off screen, it seems to calm down. So I imagine here, this blue thing here is probably one of the brightest things on the screen. So it should be heavily blue. Turn it down. Yeah. And then as you move the flame off screen over here. Move it back up on screen. Because yeah, you can see that it's blue, less blue, more blue. Wow, that's cool. I like that. That's really cool. Like I say, it's it's screen space, how this works. So if this flame is off screen, 
it's not going to be taking it into account, which is why in the lighting channel you'll see, all you're seeing there is the reflection of the HUD, so ignore that. But the gun here is not blue with image base lighting up. And then we look up, the blue kicks in because now that flames on screen. Turn that image base lighting intensity down to zero and it disappears off completely. It's so one of those things where I'm probably going to set it way too high. But at the moment, I'm going to leave that on one because I really like how that looks. Because it just adds that extra bit of kind of ambient lighting to a scene. So this area here. I imagine the brightest thing will be that and this bit of water here. Lighting channel. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes. Let's turn that down to zero. See, you've got the direct sort of lighting here, the bounce lighting and the ambient occlusion, like sort of direct reflections near the water. And as you turn the image base lighting up, it's using the brightness of that water to really color distant stuff in the scene. It's kind of using the brightest things on the scene as a kind of de facto environment map in lieu of an actual HDRI environment map and using that to inform the color of all the 3D objects on the screen. That's what I think's happening uh, from what I'm seeing here. So it's a bit excessive with it set to one there because the water's not that bright. It wouldn't be affecting things around it. But with a little bit of tweaking, that looks pretty good. Let's have a look in the standard channel. Look at that. <laughs> that is some seriously bright blue water. Oh, that is so cool. And it seems to have zero impact on the frame rate. And I uh, haven't really noticed any frame drops since turning this on. This area here especially, when you're getting that extra lighting from the sky. It looks like a bit of green. Yeah, there you go. I think where this will work best is where you've got a, like a huge open area with like a lot of sunlight because then it'll pick up on the sun as the thing that it should be getting the lighting from and it should look a lot more natural. So let's try and find a map that has a lot more sun on it. So let's fire up Sesma and see how that looks. So you can see this has some really bright sky. So let's go out into the open. Whoa, now that's bright. Okay. <laughs> let's turn the image base lighting down. Whoa, yeah, see, there you go because it's taking that bright sunny color in the sky and using it to inform the overall lighting on objects around the map, which means you get a lot of overblown colors. Like, oh my God. You can even see it shift, I think, as the sun goes on and off this screen. Because in theory, that sun should be the brightest pixels on the screen there, because that looks like pure, like, 1.0 light. So that, yeah, you can see on screen, off screen, on screen, you can see the lighting change as it goes on and off the screen. Let's turn image base lighting down. Yeah, look at that, nothing. So that's with RTGI on, that's with it completely off. Back on, and then image base lighting off. And even that was quite overblown anyway. So image base lighting wasn't making the lighting overblown, it was already overblown due to my probably excessive settings. This is really interesting. I'm fairly certain it's taking light from the skybox there as the brightest spot on the screen. I could be wrong. Because, yeah, that sun is reasonably bright. I don't know. This is, uh... It's tough to tell. Either way, it really does help the lighting of a scene. Let's go down here. Oof. So interesting. Look at that glow as well. Oh my god. Oh, that looks so good. So let's try and find another map with a really bright skybox and see if we can check that that affects it as well. So let's go to a bit of the old classic frigate. So that kind of diffuse through the cloud sun should be the brightest thing on screen there. Lighting channel. Hmm. Image race lighting. Still having kind of an effect. I don't think it is taking the skybox into account actually. It's taking the water into account. It's taking a bunch of other things into account. So it is taking the, I think it is taking like the brightest thing on the scene into account. But in this case, it doesn't seem like it actually is taking the skybox into account. So I guess it can only interact with things that are in the depth buffer, like 3D objects and the HUD. Seems unusual that it can't sample the sky because it should be able to sample the pixel intensity, like the brightness colors of what's in the sky. But I guess because it doesn't have any depth buffer information, it can't really do anything with that. That's a shame because I thought for sure it was taking into the sky into account the brightness of the skybox. Like, at least if the skybox had, like, the brightest point in the scene on it. But it doesn't look like it is. So I'm guessing on Sesma, what I was seeing was, on and off the screen, was the brightness of lit pixels on the walls that were going on and off screen. But overall, though, it does... It does seem much better lit, at least in areas where there's lots and lots of uh, lighting bouncing off of 3D objects. Out here, not so much, but definitely in 
really bright areas like on Sesmar and in here you can see the difference. So I could be wrong about a lot of this. Still just learning myself. Lighting's a bit overblown in here, but let's have a look. Lighting channel. So there, it's adding like a bit of an extra pinky sort of colour here. But it is actually adding a bit of extra white colour here from this bright light here onto the gun. In theory, if we move that off the screen, we should see that darken down. As we go up. So yeah, that's the extra bright light there going onto the gun. But there's also a bit of red light here. So it's smart enough to bounce that up rather than just lighting everything with that white colour. Yeah, look at the extra glow from the green light there. Like, that is a lot more green glow and lighting. Oh, that looks phenomenal, doesn't it? Oh, look at that. So with Azira, you're basically getting nothing in that corner on the left and on the right. Then you crank it up. Lots and lots of extra uh, in that area there and there. Capture the flag, and it's got to be Lava Giant. So this should be really interesting. Although, yeah, because the lava's part of the skybox, it's probably not going to affect it, unfortunately. Yeah, no, it's not going to do it. Ah, that's a shame. But the lava here, this should affect it. There we go. All right, lighting channel. Ooh, look at that. Turn it right down. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, look at that. That is some serious... Lava. Wow. That is awesome. <laughs> Look how bright that is. That is so awesome. Because I think before I'd have to take like bounce lighting. Yeah, you'd have to crank the bounce lighting up to like 10 to get the lava to really have an impact. And then everything else just gets too excessive. Whereas the image based lighting. Bam. So even just a little bit gives the lava that extra glow, like 0 0.11, but cranking it up to 1. Look at that. And even when the lava's not on screen, the, the light bouncing from the lava up here is still causing it to have an effect. Oh, I've set it way too high, but that looks so cool, it's worth it. Oh, look how blue that is. Oh, let's go at the flag. Let's go at the flag, because that is going to have an effect on it. It's got to, right? Like, super bright lighting channel. <laughs> Image race lighting down. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that is so blue. Excellent. That is a really cool setting. It's getting a bit overblown in some of these areas. I'm probably going to have to tweak it a bit more. But look at that. It's like really orange there. And then you go back, it turns more greeny like the rest of the scene. Yeah, look at the difference. Like basically very little effect on the gun there. And then loads of effect on it. Alright, so let's check out DM Icebound, which I think is a custom map. Sort of outdoorsy. I think this will have some good lighting and good colours on it that should show up quite nicely. It's got this really blue area here. Let's go to the lighting channel. That is seriously blue from all that ice. Turn it down. Yep. Look at that. So it's really taking into account that sort of bright blue and using that to light the scene up. Again. I'm setting it to an excessive level, but that looks awesome. It just looks really super icy. You could probably get away with like setting it to like 10 or 15. Ooh, look at the reflection there as well. I think that's from the uh, SSR, the DirectX 11 renderer. Ooh, but no, it is also the lighting of uh, RTGI. And the image-based lighting just adds an extra bit of lighting to the scene there from that teleporter. That's just with the SSR on with DirectX 11. And then boom, add that in. Oh, that looks good. Gorgeous. And here, lighting channel. Again, blue lighting. Crank it right down. Crank it right up. It's really using that blue light in this bit here to uh, inform the overall uh, lighting configuration of the scene. Yeah, again, thanks to uh, CJDK for letting me know about that setting. I wouldn't have known about that if uh, they hadn't let me know. I really, really like it. And I can't wait to try it on other games as well. Because they originally told me about it on my Doom Eternal video. So it'll be good to fire up Doom with this again and set that image based lighting up. God, look how metallic the shock rifle looks there with that bright lighting on it. I think that's being informed by this bright bits of ice here. So imagine you can mix this up with other things like uh, specular and roughness. Uh, so we go roughness. Look at that. Oh, man. The specular is at 40, zero. Interest lighting. That looks super metallic. Oh, yeah, I really love that effect. I can't wait to try that out in some other games. Just look at how it lights the uh, back parts of the scene here overall as well. 
I'd better stop the video here because otherwise I'm going to be here all day messing around with this. That is image-based lighting enabled in the RTGI shader. Version 0 0.19. Instructions on how to get the RTGI shader with reshade on Unreal Tournament 99 and Unreal. Both of those will be in the description. So you know where to go to grab that and get all that set up. Thanks for watching. Please do leave a like and a comment, especially if you know more about this than I do and uh, can tell me some more information about it because I'm still learning and I love learning about graphics and stuff. So it's really cool to learn more about image-based lighting and all the other cool stuff that Reshade and RTGI can do. Do hit the little bell, really helps the channel along with a subscription. Hope everyone's staying safe. I hope everyone's having a good new year so far and I will see you in the next video.